We're pretty sure most of you know how great the free projects of the month are that Vectric gives out. They're really quite amazing and really, really nice to cut. But what if you want to make them your own? Change them up a bit. Maybe add a little bit of our design and make content to them to turn them into something totally new. Well, in this video, we're going to show you how to take the divine clock and turn it into more of a wedding gift, which this time of the year, it seems like the perfect thing. For those of you that don't have the Divine Clock Project downloaded yet, we would suggest that you go over to Vectric.com and look for their free stuff and download this free project of the month. It'll come to you as a zip file, so just go ahead and unzip it someplace you can find it, probably on your desktop. That way it's quite convenient for you to find. You'll see that we actually have already downloaded some content from Design & Make that we're going to use to help us to hack the Divine Clock Project. We're going to actually package that all up into a design and make model project and offer it for sale on designandmake.com. And we'll put a link below for you. And it'll include all three models along with a helpful project sheet and a link to the actual Divine Clock download page. This is going to be an in software demo. And we're going to be using VCarve Desktop. Now, the tools that we're going to use in VCarve Desktop are also available in VCarve Pro and Aspire. So if you have either one of those software packages, you can just go ahead and follow along with any problems at all. The first thing you're going to want to do is actually download the free project from Vectric called the Divine Clock. I've already done that and I've unzipped it into a folder on my desktop. So let's have a look and see what's inside that folder. What you're going to receive when you download that and unzip it are two CRV files, one for the back of the clock and one for the front of the clock, a few images here of the finished clock the way Michael Tyler wanted it to be done, and also some pictures of it being cut. And then of course there is the Divine Clock Tutorial PDF that I highly recommend you have a look at, read through, make sure you understand the process of how the original clock should have been put together or cut, put together and finished. Once you understand that, then it's going to make this procedure much easier for you. Let's open up a fresh copy of VCarve Desktop and open an existing file. We're going to go to our desktop into our Divine Clock Project folder and we're going to start off editing our front. So let's double click on that and it should load right up. But the first thing you're going to see is this selection of notes. Please read them. Make sure you understand them before you go ahead and edit these files. There's some important information there for you. Let's click OK. Now the first thing I like to do with any of these projects is take a look at the tool paths that are provided for me to make sure that I can either edit them, keep them, or whether I need to create brand new ones. Let's look at our tool paths. Let's unselect them all. Let's go ahead and preview our tooling. We're going to preview them one at a time and the ones we don't need we're going to delete right away. This is the v-carving operation. It is important that we take a look at these, even though it's obvious we're not going to keep this one, but we do want to know what it's going to do in case we do need to keep some of the elements of it. So let's just go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. That looks great. The only piece of this that we may or may not keep would be this right here, and that's depending on your design that you want to come up with. I'm personally not going to keep that, but feel free if you do want to keep it that you can go ahead and only uh, delete this part of the tooling or the vectors that create this and just keep this bit. Regenerate that tooling and off you go. I'm not going to use that, so we're going to undo that, and I'm going to go ahead and select this toolpath and press delete on my keyboard. This is the optional cleanup tooling for that toolpath, so I'm going to go ahead again and delete that one. Let's have a look and see what this toolpath does. It gives us a profile outside, gives uses a, a 90 degree V bit, I think, and ends up giving us a nice sort of bevel on the edge. So that's nice. We're going to keep that, and then we're going to go ahead and preview this cutout pass, and that all looks good. So we're going to go ahead and lay in a a round recess or a trench in here. On the bottom of that trench, we're going to add onto that or lay into it. Uh, a nice wreath in there so it should look quite nice in the end. So let's close this. 
go to our 2D view and we can edit out the bits we don't need. So we're not going to need these vectors, this vector, or these two vectors here. Those are those two extras I was talking about. If you wanted to leave that V carving detail in there, but I don't want those, so I'm going to delete them. I'm keeping these two vectors here. Not that I'm ever going to use them for tooling, but I'm going to use them to help me line up the actual recess that we're going to put in there. And we're going to do that right now. So we're going to go File, and we're going to import in a component. Now, if you've gone to the trouble of downloading these components and putting them into your clipart library and adding them to your clipart library, then that's perfect. You can just go straight to your clipart tab and go find those. Um, I haven't, so they're on my desktop where I can find them in this models folder. Let's load this in. And now, seeing as the datum for this project was sit, was set to the bottom left hand corner, pressing F9 will not center this in the center of my job space. So I actually have to move this by hand. And luckily, I have smart staff snapping turned on, so it's going to actually snap to the center. If I hold down my shift key and this control handle, I can stretch it out to fit between those vectors. And I'm just going to unselect it and make sure that I'm happy with where that's located. I want to make it a little bit smaller. And that looks perfect right there. Let's go ahead now and bring in our component for the wreath. We're going to import that in, import in our component, the sky, open that up, do the same thing, drag it to the center, hold down my shift key and scale it up to the point that I think visually it looks right inside there. I think it looks pretty good. It's always good to look at our 3D view to make sure we have everything set up properly and we're going to notice right off the bat that there's something wrong. The wreath is not laying in the bottom of that trench, it's actually laying on the top of this, on the top of our modeling plane. So we need to take a look at our modeling tab and see how these components are interacting with each other. I see that they're both set to merge, so if I select the wreath, right click on that and change my combine mode to add, then it will actually lay in the bottom of that recess like I want it to. We're going to want to make sure that our shape height or the depth of our trench here is set properly and also the shape height of our wreath is just a hair less than the depth of our trench that way it won't peak up above and probably not get machined properly because it's sticking up above our material. So let's have a look at the actual trench here. We're going to select that look at our component properties and we see that it's 0.2216 for easy math we're going to change this to be 0.25 deep press the spacebar it changes the depth of this let's go ahead and choose our wreath we're going to change this to be 0.23 press the spacebar and now it fits in there quite nicely fills in that space and makes the most use that we can of that material that's in there let's go ahead and click close now we can go ahead and create some tooling for this. We're not going to worry about what order these are going to be tooled in right now. We're going to adjust that later. So right now we're just going to go ahead and create our roughing pass and our finishing pass. Let's click a finishing pass. In some cases what might happen is you may end up having to reset up your material again. Just make sure that you choose set the gap to the bottom. And when you click OK, it's going to ask you to recalculate it. Let's click, click yes. So it's going to recalculate these two toolpaths you already have, and that should be fine. It's not going to change anything. It's just accommodating these new models and components we have in here right now. Let's do a roughing pass. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Now I know that I'm not going to remove too much material with this, but I'm going to remove some, so that's good. We're going to use our model boundary. I'm not going to use any boundary offset. I only want it to stay within this trench in here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a machining allowance behind and I'm going to use the roughing strategy called Z-Level Roughing. This is great, it's going to be quite fast, but it is going to leave a lot of material behind that the 3D raster would. The 3D raster is going to take longer to do um, and I kind of want to make this a little quicker job. So I'm going to use the Z-Level Roughing instead and my machine can handle that, so that's great. Let's calculate that and when we preview that, like I said, there's not a whole lot of material being removed, but it's something, so I'm going to use that anyway and keep it around. Let's close that. Let's do our finishing pass. 
We're going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill. We're going to use our model boundary again. Again, no boundary offset. We want to keep this inside this trench. We're going to use an offset tooling. That way it's actually going to travel in circles when it does its tooling. It's not going to do a raster, which is back and forth, which will end up leaving some strange tooling marks behind, potentially. In this case, we're going to get radial ones that are going to, not radial, but round ones that are going to, actually going to look proper. We're going to use a step over retract. We're going to set that to 0 0.02. That way, we're going to, as we move in and out different lines, the tool is actually going to pick up, move over, and go back down again. That way, you won't get that little sort of ghost line sometimes that, that appears across your, your tooling. Let's calculate that. Let's have a quick preview of that. That looks A1, just like I'd like it to be. I'm happy with that. Now let's go ahead and reset our tooling, and we're going to readjust the way that these are going to be organized. We're going to do our 3D stuff first, so roughing, and then our finishing, and then our profile, and then our cutout. So let's just go ahead and preview all those tool paths to make sure that's the right order. And that's exactly what I'd like to have, exactly the way I'd like it to be done, sorry. Let's close that down, and we're gonna save those off someplace where I can find them, and then I would run those on my machine. Open an existing file, and we're going to go to the desktop, to my Divine Clock folder, and open up the back. Make sure that you read all the notes and understand them all before you continue. Click OK. And as always, let's check and see what the result is of these tool paths. And we can go ahead and delete out the ones that we know we're not going to need. We'll keep the ones that we think we might need. And then I will add in some extra ones in the end. So let's just have a look at the pocket one first. Preview visible toolpath. We're going to do it one at a time. That way it's easy to keep track of what's what. We're going to need that guy. We're going to need that one as well. This is the scroll. We know we're not going to need the scroll because what I plan on doing is putting the wedding rings in a dish right here and at the top I'm actually going to do some V carving. So we can go ahead and delete that one and then delete the next one and go over in our 2D view and get rid of those as well. That way we don't need those. Let's have a look at this outside profile. We're going to need that one. Look at the details here that are added to the center of these scrolls. They look quite nice. So we're going to keep those as well. Nice little addition. I'll clean up the take a look at the pocket in the middle. We need that one for sure, and then we need the cutout one for sure as well. So really all we, now we need to do is just go ahead and add in the two extra elements that we need. So the first thing we're gonna think about is that we've already done some work already on the tooling for this, and we know that this is not the surface of our material anymore. So when we bring in our wedding rings in a dish, we need to account for the difference in height of the top of our material to the bottom flat area, which is, if you look down the bottom right hand corner here, 0.125. So let's go ahead and first of all maximize our 2D view and have a look at the area that we're going to go ahead and put our wedding rings in. Now it's important to remember that the way that this shape is being made is using V-carving and so the V-carving travels along this center vector with half of the cutting tool on one side and half on the other. So there's going to be a bit of a bevel here that we're going to have left over and it's obvious in the actual preview right here that we need to avoid this bevel. So our ring needs to fit into this area here. This might take a little bit of guesswork, but we're going to see what we can do. Let's go up to File. We're going to import in a 3D component. Go to my desktop, take a look at my models. Open up the rings. Zoom out a little bit so we can get a hold of them. Put them where they need to be. Hold down my Shift key and size this down to fit. And we're just going to guess to start with. We might need to modify this slightly. But what I do want to make sure is that, that there's some space here. So there's a raised area, there's a recess and then a raised bit, which you can see in the 3D view. Uh, we can't see it yet, but we will. We can see it in the preview. Um, and also we need to make sure that we 
drop our model down that 0.125. But first of all, I'm going to show you what will happen if you forget to do that. So let's close this. Let's do a quick finishing pass. We're not going to do a roughing pass on this. There's really no need of that. We're not going to go deep enough for that with my machine. But you might need a roughing pass, so keep that in mind based on your materials and your tooling that you have available to you. We're quickly going to do a finishing pass with a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill. Model boundary, no boundary offset because we only want to come up to the edge of this oval. We're going to use an offset again starting from the center and working its way out. Let's calculate that and let's zoom in on our calculated tooling and you'll see that I guessed right there's a bit of a gap here there's a bit of a gap there so everything's going to work out alright now what I didn't do is I didn't drop this model down so that it's laying flush on the top of this surface here so if we preview that toolpath this is what we're going to get the software is expecting that we're actually machining this on the from the top of our material and that's all been removed so let's go back to our 2D view. Make sure that we have this model selected. Click on the modeling tab we'll and look at our component properties. So we know the depth of this is 0.1511, which is great. That's a shape height. But what we need to do is we need to drop it down. So to do that, we can give it a minus base height or a negative base height. So if we put minus 0.125, hit the space bar, take a look at our 3D view. Let's close down our preview. You'll see that it's actually sitting below the surface of my material or my modeling plane here, which is perfect. So now if we go ahead and close this, recalculate that finishing pass, we're going to reset our preview of everything. We're going to preview everything except for this last guy. So let's preview all those visible toolpaths. And then we're going to go ahead and preview this visible toolpath. And now you'll see that's actually going to cut so that this is actually cut into the surface of this clock, which looks perfect. Now this is not the order that I want this to do it in, so I'm actually going to go ahead and move this up to be right about there. And if we want to make sure that that's the right place in our tool tooling list to do, we can reset our preview and we'll preview all of those tool paths. And that's the perfect place for it to be machined and that looks great. Now you might want to organize this differently based on how you want to change out your tools and so on, but I think it's a fairly good spot to do that. Actually maybe even up one would be even better. That way we can that's perfect. We've actually gone ahead and pocketed, pocketed. Actually, we can even move it up one more. It would even be better because then we're going to change a bit once, change a bit twice. These are all done with the same bit, I believe, and then off we go. So if we reset that preview again and preview all those tool paths, then that's perfect. That looks great. Now the last step of this is going to be to go and add in some V carving up top. Let's just go ahead and go to our drawing tab, open up our text editor, and we're going to type in O C T O B E October, let's say 18th, 2010. We're going to make sure that's bold. We'll hit apply, close that down, and somewhere's here we've got some text. Let's bring it up to where we want it to be. Nudge it into place using our cursor keys. Let's right click on that and we're going to break this apart because I'd like to actually see the October be bigger than the actual dates and year. I think that looks quite nice like that. Now just because I'm not quite sure what tools um, Michael has decided to use I'm going to go ahead and just copy one of these tool paths. I'm going to, right, I'm going to click it, right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it and then we're going to right click on this and do it again and we're going to rename it and we're just going to add text. Take out detail and put in text. It's perfect. Double click on it. We're going to make sure that we select these vectors instead of the other vectors that were selected. Let's go ahead and calculate that and let's have a preview of that and nothing happens. And why nothing has happened is because we didn't, in our actual tooling, tell it where to start. So our start depth, because we've already pocketed out that, is the same as what we did with the wedding rings, is 0.125.
Let's recalculate that again. And now if we preview that visible tooling, you'll see that it, it's actually at the right spot where it belongs, which is great. And actually, you know what? I'd actually go down just a hair more, 0.3. Let's calculate that. Let's preview that. That ends up making it just a little bit deeper, which I think will look quite nice. So I think that once we cut this and we add the two parts together, just like Michael does in the PDF that you have, I think it's going to look quite nice in the end. And in a minute, or at the end of this, I'll show you a rendering of what those two parts look like together. Now let's not limit yourself with just what I've shown you here. You can go ahead and browse through the Design to Make store, or take a look through your clip art that you already have available in your Vectric software. You might be able to use stuff that you already have, or you may see something in the Design to Make store that you might want to purchase to add to the clock. Not just a wedding clock. Let's think about maybe a shop clock, or how about a clock for the, the hunting lodge, or the cottage, or even for a, a man cave if you wanted to. There's all kinds of things that you can do with this clock. Now if you like this video, we would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, if you subscribe to the channel, and if you wanted to get notifications of when we release new videos, please hit the little bell. We'd really appreciate that a lot. And heck, if you want to share it, that would even be better. Anyway, thanks again.